here are my five favorite Mofoto Trace features for architectural and interior design. My personal design workflow involves both Procreate and Trace on iPad, and there are pros and cons to drawing with each app. In this video, you get to see what I often use Mofoto Trace in my process. Stay all the way to the end, and I will show you a neat workflow from Trace to Procreate. Also, make sure you check out my case study files in the description below. By the way, if you are interested in seeing more of my design process on Lightpad, I have a free three-part workshop that you can sign up for today. The workshop are perfect if you are considering moving to a digital workflow that will save you time, allow you to work smarter and faster, and free you from a traditional office environment. I'll show you real-world examples with different applications on how I use my iPad for architectural and interior design work. You can click this link above or find it in the video description below. My favorite feature on my photo trace has got to be the super scale ruler. So here you can see I have a drawing of a as-built project. And if I turn on this ruler, this is our super scale ruler. And when you have a drawing calibrated to scale like mine, you can actually just use this ruler and it's going to tell you exactly how long a room or the size of a room is. But you have to really calibrate your drawing first. So to do that, we're going to hit our scale and set scale. So my drawing is already calibrated to scale, but I'm going to show you if you are using this for the first time. So you're going to find two points and it's all going to be the same for plan, elevation and section. And you're going to set those two points to a distance. And this distance you really have to know from the measurements that you have or from CAD. So let's imagine if these two distance say about 15 feet, you're going to click OK on this check mark. And what that's going to do is going to calibrate your drawing to a one to one scale, almost like in AutoCAD, you're drawing in the model space and you're drawing one to one. So if you have your drawing calibrated with a measurement and I recommend taking a measurement maybe from one end of the building to the other end of the building, that way it's more accurate than you taking two points in a room. So once that's calibrated, you're going to take this ruler and you're just going to maybe zoom in on this room and we can quickly tell that from this end of the room to this end of the room, this is about 22 feet and change. So when you're drawing, this is incredibly helpful to be able to draw one to one. So you can see when you're zooming, this ruler is going to zoom in and zoom out with you. If you have a trace canvas that's fairly uh, zoomed in, this is going to give you the level of precision that's just not possible with other softwares. So you can see here, you can get down to the inch or even half an inch, just depending on how detailed your drawing is. That's really the number one feature that I recommend anyone who are getting into designing floor plans or elevations, especially interior elevations, use the super skill ruler. It is by far my most favorite feature. On a related note, feature number two is kind of related to the super skill ruler too. And that's putting a grid on the drawing. So here I am actually going to show the grid, which I have already set. And what this grid does is it's going to superimpose a grid that's scaled and you can determine the scale of each of those squares. What I have set for the squares are one foot in length for each square. And so if you are casually drawing and doodling, you might not want to turn this on and off all the time. Once you have this super skill on, it's only going to allow you to draw straight lines and you're not going to be able to waver your lines. So for example, if I create a new trace paper right here, if I have the super skill turned on, you can only draw in straight lines and you can count your measurements like this. But if you have this turned off, what you can also do is just count the number of squares to get an idea of how big something is, like a piece of furniture or a counter by counting one, two, three, four. And you can kind of just freehand like mine right here. So that's just really useful to have this grid turned on in the background when you don't need the scale. And you can quickly doodle somewhat to scale, especially with this grid turned on. If you are doing this for the first time, you're going to go set grid. And up here, you're going to determine the look of the grid. So you can have a grid that looks like this, which I don't think is very helpful. Or you can have a dot system, or you can have mine, which is the grid. And over here, you'll determine the size for each of the grid. So my grid is set to 
12 inch apart, which is just a foot. You can also pick the color or the opacity of the grid. So you can see, actually, I have my grid set to half transparent. So if you have a grid that's fully opaque, that's going to be a little bit visually obvious. So what I recommend is set this grid to about a quarter transparency so that we can see it, but it doesn't really interfere with us drawing on top of it. So feature number three in Morfolio is the area calculation. So let's imagine I have a new layer in created on top of the as built drawing. And if I want to quickly find out the square footage for a bedroom or for an area of the house, all I have to do is go ahead and draw a line or a enclosed shape around this room. I'm doing this very quickly to show you how this works. Make sure that this line is enclosed and there's no open gaps. So this feature is going to work like this. Hit on your area calculation tool, which is right here. And this is going to scan the room and find the boundary of the line that you drew. And if you have this set to a scale, you'll see very quickly that this room is 342 square feet in size. And this box can be bigger or smaller. And this is going to give you that calculation very quickly if you need it. So if we want to keep this as as a dot, we can either just make a mental note of it or write on this, or what you can do is just click on this. And this is going to, obviously this, this text is way too big for what we need, but you can see that it's created a separate layer for this, for the size of the room. Once I know the size of the room, I'll actually just round this to about 340 and I will just make a mental note of that. That's all it takes to find out the room of something. So imagine if you had a shape that's a little bit irregular. I'm just going to draw it very quickly. Let's say if it's something like this and you're tracing around the size of the rooms in adjacent to this. And of course, I'm going to erase the lines in between and using the same method, as long as the lines are enclosed, we're going to hit on area tab. And this is going to very quickly find out that area, this area of a very irregular shape very quickly. So as you can see, this is going to be very useful if you're doing space planning for interior and you want to quickly find out the gross square footage for some of these areas. Feature number four is PDF markup. This is a great option if you are going on a site visit and then you're taking your iPad as the primary way of viewing drawing documents like I do. I'll sync all my drawings to Dropbox and if I need to, I can open it up on Morfolio Trace or I can just preload my drawing sets on Morfolio Trace. So I want to show you a couple of pages on here that demonstrate like how I use my Morfolio Trace during a site visits. So these are red lines of the plan visits that I have. And I'm doing this just really quickly as I'm walking through the site and making notes as I go. And these notes will be on different weeks. And an easy way to keep track of that, at least for me, is to just create a new layer and perhaps we'll give that layer a date and a purpose. So as you go on another day, you can create a separate layer and that layer is going to have all the markets and red lines for that particular date and onwards. So you can see that these layers are useful if you want to keep track of the changes. Once you are done with the site visit, you can come back home and make some of these more notes on a formal memo to, to send out to the contractors or, or the team. But if you have this as a way to visually identify areas where you have conflicts, this is a really easy way to keep track of your notes. This is also going to allow you to go to other pages in the PDF. So for example, in this electrical plan, the RCP that I've designed is a little bit different than the conditions on the site. So you can see all these changes to the ceiling plan and the lighting fixture and the layout. And these are really determined on site. Like I showed you in the previous feature, what I often use is a super scale ruler and we can determine a lot of the spacing right away on site with a pretty high level of precision that you wouldn't have if you were drawing this on physical paper. I'll show you a couple more examples. This is the elevation that we were thinking about moving the proportion of the slats and the 
the ratio of the lower volume versus the higher volume. So without doing this in 3D model or taking it in CAD, you can see how quickly it is just to create a separate layer and just sketch out this new proportion and reevaluate from there. We can also do this with interior cabinetry and elevations. So these are design cabinetry drawings and we can see that these are the notes that we've made on site and then we'll send this to the vendor that's actually making these cabinets so we can see that this is an example of the interior elevation we can also see that in the bathroom where a lot of these things are designed on the computer but the actual site condition may be a little different so it's really useful and important for me to take the ipad have the drawing be calibrated to scale and be able to make detail notes onto the existing drawing right away. I wanna show you one last example in a workflow. This is not exactly a feature to Morfolio Trace, but I wanna show you how I've used this workflow to really bring this drawing that's 2D, a little bit to life with depth and color. So in Morfolio Trace, I've done all the design work in a fairly precise manner. So from the very beginning, you can see that this drawing is started with the massing of the cabinetry. And this is not design. This is really just blocked out on CAD for me to create a new trace layer and design over this. You'll see that this is part of that brainstorming, which I can turn off. And then the final iteration for the design is actually on Morfolio Trace. Now, what I can do with this information is, is really great because the Morfolio Trace doesn't really have a very robust coloring tool set or toolkit in terms of brushes, adjustments, and color and tonal adjustments. What I did here was to actually export this drawing as a image. So I did the image and then I did the best. So what I did was to export this as an image to my gallery my iPad gallery, and then I imported this into Procreate where I have my favorite color brush settings and textures to really bring this and give this much, much more life. Okay, so in Procreate, what you'll see is this is the same image that I exported from Morfolio Trace. And what I could do is I could create a different folder to put all my color underneath. And I have plenty of other tutorials that shows you how I color in Procreate but you can see that it's all made up of different layers for different textures in case you wanted to swap something out or fix. And then this layer is essentially the drawing layer. And on top of this layer are two other options for a bookend. So if I turn this on, you'll see that this is a little bit different than this seating arrangement. So in case the client wanted to have a taller cabinet at the end, that's just done selectively in this area from our folio trace that's kind of integrated into Procreate. So you can do this kind of design iteration very quickly without redrawing the whole thing. And also if I turn on this island, you'll see that in the primary elevations for the kitchen with the island and without the island. And this is the sort of drawings that you can also bring in from Morfolio Trace as a different drawing. So if I turn everything off, this is a drawing from Morfolio Trace I brought in. And then this is the color that lives below it and another solid layer below that. So the colors from, from the kitchen island behind it is not going to show up. So in a design presentation, imagine if you wanted to show the elevation with a range turned on and then another elevation with the kitchen island turned on, you can do this very easily. So this is just like a little workflow and hack that I developed and discovered to bring drawing from both app. And now you don't really have to do this, but my preference is to have a better looking drawing than to have everything done in one app. This is why in a lot of my videos, you'll see that I have two apps and this is the, the approach that I have developed that works really well within my own workflow. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'd love to hear which feature you think is most helpful in Morfolio Trace.